name is Kevin Carr from Certified Functional Strength Coach, Mike Bullshit of Conditioning in Movement is Medicine. And I'm with my friend PJ from Max Play Performance here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And today we're going to go over how to progress restoring hip flexion with someone who might um, have trouble disassociating hip flexion from spinal flexion or someone who's rehabbing a hip injury and how to progress them back up into why we're trying to restore hip flexion in the first place, which is teaching sprinting and sprinting drills. Okay, so we're going to use a developmental progression. We're going to work from the ground up, restoring PJ's ability to brace his lumbar spine and his pelvis and actively flex his hip, continually adding his ability demand until we start to get into a vertical position. We're starting to work on sprinting reference drills to help improve his sprinting performance. Okay, so I'm going to have PJ start on his back here. And we're going to start in a supine hip flexion drill. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the band around his feet. Here, I'll do this for you. Thanks, buddy. All right. And um, he's going to land his back. And the reason we're going to start him on his back is so he gets support from the ground. When he's in supine, he doesn't have to worry about stabilizing his lumbar spine. All we're doing is working on reestablishing hip flexion to see if his hip is strong enough to flex above 90 degrees here. And then he can get opposing hip flexion and extension, right? So bring this back. Don't get so far ahead of yourself yet. What I want you to do, we're going to incorporate some breathing so we can work on bracing. So he's going to take a big breath in the nose. Exhale, crunch the ribs down so he gets some stability, and he's going to actively extend this leg out. And right now, he's really just in this hurdle step, single leg stance position. Hold for a second, come back up, and we're going to alternate. Big breath in. The exhale is going to help him get some stability. And what I want to see is that he gets this knee above 90 degrees. That way, he's using his psoas. It's not just relying on his rect fem to get that hip up there. Come back up. And maybe we'll do like five inch. Now, we're not actually, let's just get one more. I want to see he's able to get this hip fully extended about an inch off the ground, come back up. All right? Once he shows me he can do that, I want to try to progress him to something that's going to have a greater stability demand for him. Right? So I'm going to take this band off, and I'm going to have him flip into a push-up position. Okay? Now, we're going to use a valve slide. This is going to be much less about the strength of his hip flexors, and much more about the ability for him to stabilize his pelvis and his lumbar spine in space while he's flexing and extending his hip. Again, if we're trying to make corrective exercise as simple as possible, we're just teaching him how to disassociate joints. Can he flex his hip without flexing his spine? So he can have a more efficient movement strategy when he's sprinting, skipping, and doing athletic movements that are gonna require opposing hip flexion and extension. So now, he's gonna get in the top of this push-up position. I'm gonna have him put this slide underneath his toe. We wanna make sure he's locked in nice and tight. Now he has to think about stabilizing all of this stuff that he didn't have to stabilize when he was on the ground, right? So he's going to screw his hands in the ground. I want to push his upper back into my hand. So now he's nice and stable through his T-spine. He's locked in here. He's not going to move. Nice straight line from his head, his thoracic spine, his hips. If I get a stick here and I line him up, look at this. Rock solid. We've got three points of contact at his sacrum, his thoracic spine, and the back of his head. I want to see that he can maintain that alignment while he actively flexes this right hip up, right? Exhale as he comes up, hold, come back. I want him to exhale as he comes forward, inhale as he goes back. Again, the exhalation is just going to help him get some of these core stabilizers to work. It's going to help him get better relative positioning between his rib cage and his pelvis, right? So I just want to establish this. Now, this is a great standalone core exercise in and of itself, as long as you're not doing it like the classic old mountain climber where you're crunching your spine. I want to see that he can independently flex his hip. Now, we want to start to bring him vertical. The second we go from a prone position to a vertical positioning, he has to start to stabilize his hips and his spine in multiple planes. It's no longer just a sagittal plane challenge. So he's going to go on half kneeling. He's going to take these sticks. I want his arms straight. He's going to drive them hard on the ground like he's going to break them. Now I want to make sure he's organized over here. I don't want him really extended or really flexed. I want him to prioritize the stacking of his ribcage and pelvis, right? So the cue I'm going to use to get the posterior tilt is bring the belt buckle towards the ceiling. I want him to drive these sticks into the floor, okay? Now I want him to take a big breath in. He's going to exhale and flex this hip up. Keep his head up tall here, okay? Hold for a second, come back down. This is just single leg stance with your knee cut off, right? Let's go again. So now he has to stabilize his pelvis in the frontal plane, side to side. He has to stabilize his spine in the stacked position in the sagittal plane. 
to develop that stability in his hips while still actively flexing his uh, lead hip here to develop that hip flexion isometric, right? So all of these drills we just did, thanks, all of these drills that we just did essentially helped him restore his ability to flex his hip in progressively challenging stability positions, right? Now these are a little bit regressive. They're low level motor control drills, which I would use with someone who really has trouble flexing the hip independently of the spine, or maybe someone who's rehabbing a hip injury. Now, we're gonna to start to move towards things that look a lot more like performance, right? This might be where you start with a healthy athlete, or someone who can master this stuff well. I'm just trying to show you the whole spectrum where we might start on the far side and where we wanna finish when we start to think about sprinting and performance. So now, we're gonna to start to try to establish this in higher velocity. So PJ's gonna lean against the wall, and we're gonna do a wall drill. This is like a classic sprinting drill. If you've coached sprinters before, if you've done some sprint training before, you've probably done this, you've seen this. And what I wanna see is now that he, man he maintains this nice plank position from his head all the way down to his feet, right? It's the same type of qualities we just worked on when he was on his back, when he was on his hands, when he was in half moon. I'm gonna have him bring his right knee up, I want to see good sprint position. So one of the qualities we want, active hip flexion, I want to see this knee is above, and this hip is above 90 degrees. I want to see squeezing this knee tight, and he's got a tennis ball behind this knee. And I want him to see here that his ankle is dorsiflexed. This is a good acceleration position. Sometimes I'll just have athletes start by holding this so they get reference isometrically to the positions that we want. But now we're going to start to move into single wall drills. So he's going to do a single switch. So he's going to hold this position, at the time when I say switch, he's going to quickly switch position of his hips and hold. Okay? So ready? Switch! Good. He's going to hold this position. That's where I want to be. Again, switch! And I want to see that he's able to maintain this position. He's not going to compensate with his chest and his head and his neck. Switch! Switch! Good. So now we're just actively um, at high speed expressing that same hip flexion pattern that we did earlier. Right? Now we're going to do a double switch. So he's going to do the same thing, one knee up. And when I say go, when I say switch, he's going to switch quickly back and finish back in this position again. Ready? Switch! Don't lag on the left side. Get that left knee all the way up. Don't short change me here. Ready? Go! 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 Now we'll go on the other side. Start with the left knee up. Go! Get that right knee up for me. Let's go. Go! 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 So we're just working on that piston-like action that happens during acceleration. These are all reference drills that we might do before we do traditional time sprint training with our athletes, just to help them understand the joint positions and postures that we want them to do. So possibly we do an active warm-up, we do a couple rounds of wall drills, then we go sprint. And I say, hey, remember those wall drills we did? Those are the joint positions in the hips that we want you to practice, right? Now I'm just going to take the stability of the wall away. He's going to do the same thing as standing. So maybe if someone looks good there, then I can start using this as a teaching point. So there's going to be a single switch and a double switch. So what he's going to do is get tall. I want these same joint positions, active hip flex, knee flex, hands by the face. When I say switch, he's going to switch and hold. Then again, switch, and he's going to switch and hold. Okay, so I want to see these able to stabilize and hold and maintain that stacked hip position in a vertical stance. Okay, so one hip up. Get this hip up for me. This is where you start to see where mobility limitations show up, right, DJ? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the better he can dorsal flex, the better he can hip flex, the better sprinter he's going to be because he can get in positions to produce force more efficiently. Ready? Switch! Switch! Mm -hmm. See? But I can, and now I can start to know where he might struggle, whether it's frontal plane hip stability or it's lower leg stability. Switch! So he's struggling, right? And ideally, what I want to see is when he finishes, you can relax. He finishes, see how that high up is? Switch! 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 You can also get a pretty good idea of someone's nervous system and their readiness. When athletes tend to be tired and flat that day, they tend to have trouble stabilizing. It's a real good readiness uh, identifier as well, just because if they have trouble stabilizing, it could be the mobility, it could also be their nervous system's ability to brace and keep them where they want. Once they can do a single switch, just like the wall drill, we're going to go to a double switch. Okay, so same thing, when I say go, go, and you come back to that same start position again, go, hold, can they get back there, I want, again, don't short change the hip flexion, I want to see if we get those knees up high, All right, let's try the other side, so get the right knee up, nice and high, ready, go, not bad, get set, go, 
It's all right. It's all right. So that's why we practice this, right? Get set. Go! Better. Well, then we're going to pick on one thing at a time. I want to see better dorsal flexion. I want to see higher hip flexion. I want to see a tighter, tighter knee squeeze. Pick one. Let's work on it. Maybe we have to go back and reestablish the mobility of those joints, right? Ultimately, I want them to finish looking like this. Hold. Okay. Well, again, these are it's important to realize. Once we get to these active drills like wall drill and the double switch and the single switch, these are all reference drills for sprinting. We're still going to work on sprinting, but I might pull PJ aside so let's warm up by doing this, help them get references into the postures that we want, and then progressing from there. It's just important to realize, and it's good I have PJ, that his mobility is motor control now. I could tell him to do a thousand switches or a thousand wall drills, but if his hip can't get in the position that we want, I'm wasting my breath. So maybe we have to go back to the mobility preparation. Maybe we have to go back to the motor control to reestablish that hip flexion on the ground better before we progress into these more dynamic drills. Okay? So I hope that this progression helped you to be able to reestablish hip flexion for your clients and then hopefully progress into more athletic movements like sprinting and some of these double switches and wall drills. Thanks for watching. I'm Kevin Carr, and I'll see you here next time.